Hey everybody, it's Chris and Tony back for another episode of Blue Collar Beer Gourmet's uh, Tiger Sox series. We're here in Tony's garage in front of his lovely bottle collection. Quite an assortment that he has. Yeah, partial, exactly. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing Dogfish Head's Squall IPA. Now, Tony picked up this bottle. He can give you the ins and outs. Um, was this just a matter of seeing the brewery, liking it, and going, yeah, i got to have that? Or? It was, it was a, a simple uh, leisurely stroll through Total Wine here in town, Vegas. And uh, the beauty about going to Total Wine, or any Total Wine, because I know obviously there are more states in Nevada, is if you are a beer enthusiast and you don't go every day, when you do go once every two weeks, every three weeks, you are in for like... You better bring some money, or like for at least kind of with, with the mentality, it's like this isn't going to be easy to pick anything out because I leisurely strolled through a couple of uh, beer aisles and I still managed to drop seventy dollars on various beers. This being one of them, um, be, it being dogfish. I'm, I mean, we could sit here and run through a countdown if we, if for fun, if we had to or want to. Uh, dogfish Head is easily in my top five favorite breweries in the country. Um, Big respect for Sam, their founder, and uh, good guy. Yeah, <clears throat> everything I've ever seen on the guy, uh, whether he be at work or off doing charitable events or whatever, just so genuinely likable, cool, down to earth. Plus, what's not so like about a boss who gives you what is it, a case of beer <laughs> exactly. every week to yeah. take home? So. Which was revealed <laughs> on that series they did uh, when they talked about Dogfish. I can't remember what channel it was on. I, I can't remember what the name of that series it was. It was like four or five episodes, but it focused mm -hmm. solely on Dogfish. And, and him going to New Zealand. And him traveling all over the yeah. corners of the globe. Anyway, I just love Dogfish. I had several other bottles back here in the midst. Actually, right behind, right dead center. There's the higher map. I am. There's the piercing pills that just chase on the bus. There's their brand new romantic chemistry IP just came out, and then behind that there's a few more. So big fan of theirs. Brand new beer. This, Neither of us have had it. Limited release. Despite the fact that I've seen a lot of it on on Instagram, uh, aside from saying that it's it's limited release, and I believe on here somewhere it does say yeah it does say bottle conditioned. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really tell you a lot about this IPA. So well, I happen to have in my little pocket. All right. A little, Don't little, it home a little side note on this beer. Um, nothing real crazy. Um, anchor. Okay, I wrote down the anchor the beers because I have a couple of those as well. Um, no, actually, I didn't cover this beer, but I did see it on here that it's a nine percent uh, ABV. So we know the ABV. Um, the IBU count couldn't find it anywhere, but I'm sure if we you know play around on the internet, we can locate it. But I didn't see it on the bottom anywhere. And what's also I noticed about this too, despite the fact that it is bottle conditioned, there's no date. Which normally on a bottle condition, it does say 2016 yeah. release. Right here at the edge, right here at the bottom, almost it feels like braille if you uh -huh. run your finger across it. Um, I did see some digits down there, but I don't think it, it 13, I think it named a, a month of a year maybe, but I don't think it actually did. M3101 16. Maybe it was, okay, so maybe January of 16. That's what I surmised okay. too. Like, from the All right, so yeah. Um, we're going to be trying out uh, the good folks at Taza uh, sent me uh, a re requested that I would endorse and at least try out their um, few of their products. These are their shatterproof. You see, you can squeeze this uh, shatterproof wine glasses. They sent me a four pack of those. This is their pop the top bottle opener. And the deal with the pop the top bottle opener is that it does preserve. Your caps. So, if you're one of those guys who likes to put caps in uh, wooden plaques from the states of the beers that you've been drinking, uh, this is exactly the opener you're going to want to use because it does preserve your cap. And it worked pretty good. We tried it out on a uh, on a Grand Canyon uh, yes. that had actually been wax sealed. Yes. Um, and even Taza wasn't exactly sure how well that was going to work <laughs> out. So, I'm going to have to send them a link to that video, letting them know how it goes. And uh, you want to try this one? Sure. It's simply supposed to be a matter of just pressing it down and then pulling it up. That couldn't have been easier. But seriously, it's captured the, there's your cap still inside. A little bit of a elbow grease. So, yeah, I mean, Don't pretty much too just hard down and four legs of, legs of the yeah, table here. This is a wobbly table. Collapse, so. A collapsible <laughs> table. Hard. Then the bottle breaks and you can't move it. <laughs> Didn't get any smoke off this. What are you getting off the first uh, before we pour? Let's see what are you? Oh, yeah? I mean, it just, yeah, like my first, uh, first 
word that came to mind. Oh, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> maybe it's a, maybe it's going to be the citrusy. Maybe the citrus uh, that it's going to be a little more pronounced in the hops. The sourness of like a peel, maybe perhaps. All kidding aside, um, all humility aside, Tony is better at pouring than I am. <laughs> I'm going to let him pour. Uh, if you saw the last review, when we had that uh, uh, Grand Canyon uh, I'm going to porter, I. I don't know how I could have put more foam into a glass. So, um, well, to be fair to you, it was a, a three-year-old aged bottle. It was, it was lukewarm. So. I, I and still you did drive it across town. Anytime, miles, anytime so I defer, it bounced around I can defer to Tony's pouring, though. Uh, and I said it before; I'll say it again. Tony could fit twenty ounces of beer into a sixteen-ounce glass. So, <laughs> I think I'm gonna make you proud of this one. Oh yeah. Now that is a nice color. That's a nice. Um, yeah, you're catching the right angle from because the sunshine's coming up. From mm -hmm. There's a pour. That's almost like a cider color, wouldn't there's you a say? Pour. Like a. Yeah, it almost it almost looks like uh, there's like, and I'm not putting down the company Tang, but it almost the, the color reminds me of Tang, with like some peach juice kind of like tossed in there. That's well, just I was the a color. big fan of Lipton's, tea. Lipton's tea. Has <laughs> always been since the '70s. This honestly reminds me of Lipton Sun Tea. They used to make in the yeah, summer, it really does. It's got that, that uh, tea color. Look at that. Wow. Right to the rim, baby. Oh, look at all that silt. Nothing. See the. Uh, oh, yeah. We're we're getting, yeah, we're getting some stuff. We're getting some floaties, people. All right. Um, okay, I did pour this thing. I got it. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice pour. Indeed. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's smell it. Good idea. Apricot, big time. Citrus, mm -hmm. big time. That is complex. That is good. That's about it really complex. is, because it's like you can take. This is the first time I can actually say this. I'm tasting the hops without the bitterness. Not to say that there is no bitterness. There is bitterness. Yeah, but I am buds. truly tasting hops. Buds normally, yeah. Normally, when you say I taste the hops, that means it's a very bitter beer. But this, I'm actually tasting hops. I feel like I'm the same way you can sometimes taste malt or barley in a beer. That could be what we're seeing in our. Uh, Little bits, little bits and pieces in the glass here are. Uh, you almost want to say that this is like, I didn't like a salad in a way. You're just getting like little. Oh, because you poured your second. One. That's why. That, that's that's true. I think. I'm not getting any floaties in mine. Not that I'm complaining. There's <laughs> some, <laughs> not also, I guess some, some floaties. floaties. All right. <laughs> There's some floaties. Now I feel better. Damn, I'm seeing some chunks of this. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I don't know whether you can see that or not, but there is a show up. We definitely see it. I can see it from right here. Probably a good four or five feet away. Or so, feet away. Yeah, there's there's lots of floaties in there. Mm, very rich IPA, but without it doesn't come across as an imperial. No, but I, could, but I could see it being dubbed as like a. I, I don't think double IPA would work either because that's that would be a little more subtle. I would say I this would, is definitely a specialty IPA. You know, sometimes you have you know IPA and you go, okay, that's pretty standard IPA. You get one that's kind of well, I don't even want to say watery, but like on the lighter edge. Okay. You know, this is a session IPA. Right. This is definitely a specialty IPA. It's just a matter of what specifically the specialty is. But I, I could seriously polish this off probably <laughs> two or three minutes. It is so delicious and smooth and and crisp and sharp. You got real sharpness to it, but it's it's not bitterness, like you yeah. said. It's just like the flavors almost seem like they're amped up. Like it's like you just if you could give steroids to hops, you know. <laughs> well, a, you know, um, on uh, on the bottle of the 120 minute uh, IPA, uh, the the age limit I won from uh, Top Shelf Wine and Spirits. Cheers to Top Shelf Wine and Spirits for their. Uh, um, top for their beer for a penny contest, and if you're not, if you're in the Vegas area and you have an Instagram account, I strongly encourage you to uh, like them and follow them. They've got the um, beer for a penny contest. They've got one contest right now that's really nice. I wish I'd actually won that one. It's like a, a trip to somewhere, and you get a couple of different bottles. And anyway, but um, yeah, they're they're good folks. They they uh, it, it is sincere. Um, the whole beer for a penny thing. 
you know, they, they, they have to charge you sales tax in order to keep Uncle Sam off their back. <laughs> yeah. But they do sell you a beer for a penny. And I got uh, uh, last year's 120-minute uh, IPA from Dogfish Head. And Tony and I are going to be reviewing that as well as this year's. Uh, probably in the next uh, probably the next video, if not uh, if not the next one, then the one after that. Mm -hmm. Definitely will be the next Tiger Socks will be that. So this is so... This is so interesting. It's, I mean, it's, it yeah. is, and it's so interesting. It's, it's like I mean, dog, like I said, I, you could you could give dogfish head six random ingredients, and they can turn it into a fantastic beer. It's true. I, I mean, mean, yeah, those guys. Just, you could give that guy, and one of those ingredients could even be like motor oil, and I'm sure <laughs> right, somehow right. he you know yeah, distill it down to something and throw in some black currants and go, okay, it's yeah. now black currant motor oil. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think they actually have a. Uh, on their website, some Dogfish uh, website, mm -hmm. or, or maybe uh, anyway, a spinoff or something. But anyway, a little vague, foggy memory here. But they have a something called a, "That's interesting. Let's brew it or let's drink it." Uh -huh. Or that looks strange. Let's drink it or something like that. I might be correct. Maybe you can throw some comments in there. If you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not giving it the correct name. But it basically it's along those lines. Like, hmm, that's that's odd. Let's drink it. So that kind of shows you that Dogfish Head is willing to. Yeah. Toy with anything, really. <laughs> they will, and uh, you know they they say on that bottle on that uh, 120 minute age as well. Um, I, I think pretty much any of their IPAs, especially like a bottle condition like this one in a nice dark bottle, I, I'm not you know I'm not going to spend your money for you. But if you go and get another bottle, I I bet that's one you could probably keep in a cold dark place, oh, a cold dark place, and yeah. an age on your Squall own. Squall IPA, everybody. Squall IPA. Last thoughts. Um. I just, I don't, it's difficult for me to really even explain it because, I mean, now mind you, this is the same brewery that bought you the beer with, God, what was it, 685 IBU? Oh. The Hulad is actually what it was called. You know, so the, the, these are people who are not afraid to put hops like to use the Holy Grail. or create we IBUs. Live in Nevada, they're in Delaware. We're not going to get our hands on it. It's, it's true. That's the sad part is yeah. knowing that it's out there. We'd have to journey like a you know, Frodo. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're in sort of a beer. The, the desert is a beer desert out here. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lambast the uh, three tier system as I have many times before. But suffice to say, there is one. There's a major distributor in town who kind of has a stranglehold on the whole scene. Yeah. And um, even though some of you folks further away, further west in California, are drinking the 120 IPA from this year, it's not available in Vegas. and probably won't be until sometime later in the month. As of today, which is May 1st, I was just in uh, Club Wine the day before yesterday, April 29th. And uh, as Chris said, um, these beers, it is out. And he, I, I get Facebook, um, as I'm sure you guys do too, Facebook notifications, you know, it's like, it's hitting shelves now. And you don't expect it to appear, you know, that calendar day but you know you give it a few days business days exactly i expect it on my shelf if it's on the facebook you know, tell us like here you go drink it uh stone does that with their uh, enjoy by series um because they like clockwork you know, schedule them every few months yeah um they're very quick to tell you when it when it's on your shelves because they want you to buy it by that date but um they're just a little behind the ball i mean we do get some beers here that other, I'd say other cities and other states are a little slow to get. In fact, I know I do. We do because, again, back to Stone, I hear people say, why isn't this in Bill in the State? I can't find it anywhere in, but it tells you on their distribution on their website what states are included. Because not every Stone beer or Dogfish beer is in every state, it's obviously. So, yeah. so. But finishing up on this beer, um, it's it's it really like just grabs your tongue. It, 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 Almost makes it hard to talk, <laughs> even though I'm doing a good job of talking. Um, Anything like a leather, with a slight leather or even leather, leather soap? Not good in that. No, no, I'm not good in that. But I'm getting a lot of stuff. That's that's, what's, that's yeah. like you said. It's so complicated to like just isolate one. You, you've got such a marriage of flavors and smells. I gotta admit, I'm dying when this beer is finished. I want to taste one of those floaties. I'm gonna grab just one of the bigger pieces, floaties, yeah. just put it on my tongue and see. What that tastes like. If you're an IP fan and you want something challenging, it's got a 9% ABV, a little high for, for an IP, uh, IPA, obviously. But um, 
this isn't going to like handcuff you like a uh, like a